Okay guys, we'll do 10 minutes live and 10 minutes of live work please uh, with Stephen Kenny and we'll get started with Tony O'Donoghue on 7 minutes live. Okay. Hi Stephen. Hi. Um, great to see Andy Moore uh, out in the grass there and finally in the, in the senior squad. What are your hopes for him? <clears throat> yeah, well, he's quite versatile and he's played um, as a midfield player. I've seen him play as a midfield player for Blackburn. Blackburn has also played recently on the left as well, you know, wide on the left. So he's a versatile player at Brighton. At Brighton, he was a, nearly a second second striker at times. So he's a good foot, just a good footballer. He's obviously, um, you know, uh, technically good and he's. He's done well for Blackburn and, and done well for the Irish in the 21 team. But, and, um, you know, with, with, with uncertainty over a couple of players, we're, we're delighted to bring him in. Has he a chance of starting? Of starting? Yeah. Well, we've two games, and, um, you know, we'll see that over the two games. I think, uh, obviously, we called him up for the, the game against Gibraltar. Um, but unfortunately, he picked up an ankle injury in the in the end of 21 as a national. So, um, you know, certainly, uh, he, you know, we're delighted to have him in. From your point of view as a former under 21 manager, that was a bit like robbing Peter to pay Paul, in a sense, taking him away from important games? I think from, from uh, every, every young player is, is ambitious to be senior international, it's, you know, to play for the senior international team. That's every, every young player's dream. And uh, to get that opportunity, he was denied it, obviously, against Gibraltar because of the injury. So to be involved in the international, that's his, that, 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 without doubt, is his, his absolute ambition. And uh, so this is, we'll see how, we'll um, see how things transpire. <coughs> but he comes into the squad for the first time. What about the players that went for scans? Evan Ferguson, Jimmy McGrath, Woods Wobble. Um, have you any definitive word on them? And so those are plenty of stuff. So um, yeah, no, we're, we're just monitoring their situation at the moment. Not all of them are straightforward, and um, so obviously we reported yesterday, and they they, they were all scanned yesterday. And um, obviously we have the results of their scans, but we're just it's not just about the scans, but managing the injuries and so forth. And uh, so we'll see how that goes over the next couple of days. But to lose players, particularly. Gio, Evan, Jamie, who's so good the last day. Mm. But we'll see, you know, we won't lose them all, but we might not have them all. You know, that's, that's the way I see it. But it's, it's, um, we'll know more over the next couple of days uh, regarding them all, and uh, obviously, uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Just, just to follow on, Steve, on, on those players, who, who would you be most concerned about? You kind, of, you kind of said that maybe they're at different levels, that the four lads, are there, are there any that be most concerning to you as regards less of a chance to play this week? Um, well, it is early. I know Chidozi is uh, finding it you know, difficult, so we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see with, in regard to Chidozi. And also Will Smallbone as well. Um, so we'll have to, you know, they're all they're all doubtful. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to see how they are. In terms of, of this week, of course, it's the last game of the campaign. The campaign hasn't gone the way yourself the players would like to, is, is, is there a challenge to kind of keep the mood up? Obviously they only came in last night to get them on the training pitch today. How has the mood been? Well, they came in yesterday morning and um, we did it good. We had, um, they were presented with our caps for the international season uh, last night by, by uh, Niall Quinn last night. So that was a, a good evening and uh, training today all those players are trained today it was a good training session. We, we, you know, we found it beneficial, and it's a great game, really. We go to Amsterdam to play Holland in, in Amsterdam. It's a terrific game, uh, one that we're really looking forward to. It's a full house in Amsterdam. You know, the players that have not experienced that before going to play Holland away. I think uh, it's already, you know, it's been mentioned and said probably earlier in the week, but that. In, in, in Ireland's history, our best away record, our best away result 
is reportedly, you know, Scotland in 1987, you know, Scotland away. Um, so, um, we, we've gone close with a couple ourselves in that, obviously very close. Uh, so this is the objective for the players, is to sort of try and get, you know, the people might uh, deal with a possibility, but the objective is to, to uh, try and go to Holland and, and uh, get an extraordinary win out there and, and, and make their, all the players make their mark individually and collectively in Amsterdam. That, that has to be the objective. And finally, just on a, on a personal level for you, how is this week? I know you, you touched on it last week. You don't know what the, the future holds for you. How are you yourself finding this week? Oh, I'm fine. I think just we've got to, you know, we, we haven't got everyone today. Obviously, seven players involved in games on Sunday. That means we had to... You know, uh, couldn't train them properly today, so um, all the players have trained, trained well. You know, we imparted some of our, some of the components of you know our, our game plan into today's session, but tomorrow will be the main session, and um, you know we want to make sure we're ready. I think the game against Holland at home was a, in the first half we were absolutely excellent in that game, and probably you know we're disappointed we're two 0 up at at one stage but obviously Holland showed their, their obvious class in the, in the first 20 minutes the second half showed showed their quality um, but we uh, were very much in the game for, for the 90 minutes and it was a very very tight game so I think um, we should look forward to going to Amsterdam we know that they can qualify if they win and that's a big incentive for Holland but we won't lack incentive going there, and it's a great, it's a great opportunity. Ashley, please. Yeah, uh, Stephen, I saw you're at the cup final at the weekend, a record-breaking crowd, and um, great occasion. How do you think that Irish football can now capitalise on that? Oh, that's a big question uh, because that's on many, many levels. You know, that's a, that's a big question because um, obviously I've been lucky enough to be involved in eight FA finals, so. The um, as manager, so I've been involved in Tolka Park. That's what that's when the only four two finals are in Tolka Park as a manager, and uh, obviously there's such a limited capacity there. So then uh, in the RDS also, um, so to have it in the Aviva Stadium is, is where it should be, you know, rightly so, and it's a very special occasion there, and obviously great to see. Um, you know the level of support the weekend, and uh, fantastic to see that. And, uh, but that's not the quite the question: is how how can we capitalise on it? So that's that's a that's a bigger issue, and uh, that's um, um, obviously serious investment in, in the infrastructure ground, grounds is is one of the biggest things. You know, I think uh, investment in academies, investment in investment at all levels of the game, really. Um, a lot of academy coaches are. Still not, still not paid. You know, a lot of clubs. And I think yeah. So that's that's massive for the, you know the, to uh, to have that level of. Uh, we've seen it with with some, some of the clubs. You know how when they really focus on their academies. So that's an example there at the weekend. You know they had uh, real benefits from that. You know from from the links with the clubs that they have had, the schoolboy clubs they have had, linking into them, and they they've certainly reaped the benefits of that. So, a lot of good players um, coming through there, um, and definitely uh, infrastructure is massive. You know, in terms of stadiums and training facilities, that, that they are big. Uh, they, you know, they need to be improved because we're nowhere near the levels of other countries. And can that make it tough as Ireland manager? Can it have a knock-on effect if we don't have that football industry? Here in Ireland, with the facilities and the academy coaches. Yeah, no, you know, certainly, uh, certainly it does because, particularly the impact of Brexit, and as you know, it, I've, we, you know, at least 20, play, 20 players have come through our own system, through our own the 15 system. We've played, uh, blooded into the international team over the over the last three years to give them that competitive international debut, um, and but. A lot of those players went to English clubs when they were 16 and benefited from being in English uh, Premier League 
championship uh, academy structures from 16, 20 years and 16 and 18 and 19 in full time. Um, that's no longer the case, of course, you know, with not, not everyone, but not all of them. Um, you know, Liam Scales and Jamie McGrath and those that had other routes, but m majority of them. And um, so that's a big, a big dilemma now for, for Irish football going forward to have to try and uh, bridge that gap with investment in uh, academies because it's always, it's always been the way from, <laughs> from when all the great players went to the, to the club, you know, Manchester United and other clubs in the in the fifties and sixties and. And, and all of the clubs at that stage so it's always been that way and we've seen a lot of our players go to even clubs like Norwich and Derby County and Brighton and, and flourish uh, in their academies so from 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 Irish schoolboy clubs so definitely um, that that's that is a, a big challenge for all of the Irish clubs here um, to to try and uh, promote <coughs> Well, it's a challenge for the FAI and for the government to provide the infrastructure and the possibilities that exist for for players to develop in Ireland in that period. Steve, sorry, in terms of your own, your own personal position in a tricky situation, if you're, if you're in that regard, how have you tried to shut out that outside noise when you get together with the players, whether that's the training pitch in the team hotel? Um, yeah, no, just... Uh, just focus on, on the training and the games really and the, <coughs> the players are ambitious themselves they want to have they want to experience moments like playing in, in, against Holland and Amsterdam and, and all of, and, and what goes with that and the opportunity that exists there so the players are very determined they've just you know been open and honest people know my contract ends next week and so forth and, and uh, so that's that hasn't altered anything you know just it's business as usual. We just work hard and focus on on preparing well for the two games. When you look at the players you're out, but then you also look at the age profile of the squad, whether it's yourself or, or someone else who comes in the future. How boy are you about what's to come from this group of players in the coming years? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I am. A, I think there's a lot of very talented players there that are really emerging in their club careers as well and doing well, starting to do well this season. Um, we probably had the equivalent, two years ago we had the equivalent number of players playing in League One, you know, and now we have players playing in the Premier League um, where their career is on an upward trajectory. Um, and all of the players in the squad, uh, the majority, you know, high percentage of players have got their careers on no upward trajectory, they're only going to get better, you would feel. So, um, there's good good options in most areas, and uh, uh, you know, you feel that there there is uh, a lot of growth in the squad for sure, and a lot of potential there. Gavin? Yeah, I see. Just to clarify, is Smallman out, or is he... Not, not, not yet. No, not yet. No, we're, we're clarifying... Uh, he needs um, he's, he's two, two injuries actually um, so he has a foot injury and uh, he has a heavy challenge that forced him off for the weekend for Southampton so on his story so he's two two injuries but he's not ruled out yet now we still uh, still time we'll see on that were you conflicted at all about calling up Andrew Moore and just give him the time on the two important yeah, we always, always take that into consideration. That's why we didn't pick him in the squad initially, you know, because um, we could have had him in just as a foot. Certainly, uh, we're unsure of of uh, a few players that we've mentioned. So Andrew gives us some options in, in a variety of positions. So he, uh, it's a result of ambition, obviously, to play for the senior international team, and um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes, but. He um, he's performed very very well for for Blackburn recently, and he obviously got injured in the under twenty ones, which halted his progress at Blackburn as well because he didn't play for a few weeks. Um, but he he's, he's done well over the last couple of weeks. One question of the line, Dad. Steve, um, 
just looking ahead now with a we've established the squad now and the young squad will really get better. And it's just looking ahead to the next campaign. Uh, is it imperative for this team to now create a reputation of being difficult to beat? And is Holland away the perfect opportunity to put in place a, a formation, especially for away away matches that, that really show that you know, how this team can be uh, really solid defensively and really hard to, to, to beat? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to discuss tactically how it's going to be in future campaigns necessarily, but um, from our point of view, all of the games that we've played against the top teams, I spoke about early in the week, I know I said it already early in the week, but you know, whether it be Portugal. Home and away, Serbia home and away, uh, Scotland home and away, Ukraine away, I would think, and, and definitely France at home and Holland at home. All of those games have been, uh, they're, they're top teams, really top teams. Centenary game with Belgium, but uh, top teams that, you know, they've been fiercely contested games and exceptional games of football, I feel. All of those games have been very, very good games of football. And uh, come out on the tight margins of some of them we've drawn some of them um, uh, obviously beat Scotland in, in that but the uh, so I don't feel we're far away in those games do you know what I mean I don't feel I don't feel we've been far away um, and that's the system we had played served as well in that regard you know I think uh so, but there are there are different systems we have played, and we haven't played the same system in all of those games. But so I feel, um, you know, so from my point of view, um, it's about just improving some of the small details, really, in relation to your right, some of the goals you conceded, or you know, or just been more clinical when we get the opportunity to be that to. to with the chance to stop I think Aero would say about like ten percent of the crowd would say that went to the uh, cup final could get into a Pats game or a Bulls game at the moment. Um, and just you spoke there with the government. What would you say to the government in terms of if you're investing in, in the industry of horse racing and you're getting a, a, a return? What would they get if they invested in an industry that would be football in this country? What was the what was the the ten percent? I didn't get that ten. So. Say if there were forty five thousand at the at the game, like ten percent give or take of that crowd can actually get into a Bowls game or get into a Pats game at the moment in right. the league next season. So it's quite staggering that ninety percent of the crowd just can't go. Now in terms of that and academies particularly, what can the government money what would the government money do for, for an industry in this football, men men's and women's? Uh, well I, I think um, it's effectively about raising standards, you know. And, and the standard of the teams and the standard, you know, you want, uh, ideally you want the champions and, and the teams qualifying for Europe, you want more than one team being able to qualify for group stages of competition, I think that's ideally what you would want, you want to every year um, get into the Champions League, it was actually, as a, as a coach, you had to get into the Champions League. And the Europa League, that was really difficult to get into as well. But now with the, with the Conf Europa Conference, which is a new, obviously a relatively new competition, it gives the opportunity to do that. Um, and how do you do that? It's it's difficult to do. If you don't win the league, it's it's easier if you win the league to not easier, but it's it's more attainable if you win the league. If you don't, it's, it becomes more difficult. But it's about raising the standards of the teams um, right throughout. Um, and by doing that, infrastructure and grounds, infrastructure and academies, infrastructure and training grounds, um, higher levels of professionalism um, around the clubs, and just um, you know, the, you 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 have an opportunity to pay your players, you know, more, which 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 obviously attracts a uh, higher standard of player, or keeps players here longer, so you're not losing players to. So at the, you'll always lose players to the top level if they're, if they're good enough but you're, so you're not losing 
players to the middle level and lower level in England, you know, so that 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 becomes a problem um, when you're losing some of your better players for that because economically uh, they can they're in a better situation. So I think it's uh, on many many levels, you know, in terms of uh, your training facilities, your your infrastructure, your academies, your first team, the infrastructure around the teams, around the clubs, and just the sheer professionalism of clubs, and to have a, have every club in the Premier Division. Uh, like that, um, because you see the value community is the value, like this. You said, what what did the government get back? Is that one of the questions? Whether you get, um, you know, the value of a, the club being a focal point of of the community is a major asset in society, and I think it's um, it can be a huge have a huge impact in whether it be a one club, one town, in a provincial town or city can have a massive impact, or fragmented clubs as we've seen in Dublin, you know, in terms of, fra not fragmented clubs, but fragmented in that, in Bohemian, St. Patrick's, Shamrock Rovers, Shelburne, and in different parts of Dublin, and so you've seen their growth has been terrific in the last year or two particularly, and it's to have, obviously it's unfortunate with Cork City going down, and because they, they have great potential, and to have the, the clubs in the major cities, um, I think have the to have the capacity to get uh, crowds. And we've Galway and Waterford coming up one one club, one city. You know we have that which is which is good, and that and these are these are important things for the development of football in Ireland. And uh, but you obviously want to continue to improve and get better, and we still have a long way to go to 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 even get to the Scandinavian levels or, or you know or our clubs throughout Europe. Just the other question, sorry, the, whoever if you're in the job for the next campaign or whoever's in the job, is this a more exciting set of players than the one you and heard? Um it's not I don't think it's fair to say that or you know about any any players, but what I will say is that the team was at the end of mainly at the end of a cycle than I would have felt. Um, there's no there's no player currently playing that I've over I'm, I'm overlooking. Okay, people in Sammy Smodix there's a situation there with himself but the person's situation but the the um, there's nobody that you'd say in the championship or in the Premier League, there's not one player that you'd say you should be picking him. Do you know what I mean? At the moment, I don't think, not not too many anyway. Couldn't really. So I, d I don't I don't think. So a lot of the players who were who were in that squad, who were attacking mainly attacking players and things like that, who were on the periphery of it when David and Gold or Couture have gone down the divisions just because that's the way a work happens sometimes, you know. So all of the other players have emerged. Uh, we haven't given caps out cheaply. We've done it with a vision of of. Of what the team could be in the future, to I've spoken before, we've seen the best 17 year olds in the country at it as an under 21 manager and seen where they could become, what they could become as senior internationals, um, and had a, and and seen the possibilities that existed with with that, and all of a sudden now we have much better attacking options. Obviously, probably injured in this camp with Shadows particularly. And, and we we'll see how Evan is, but obviously with Adam and Troy and and Michael Abafemi's just back, he's injured. But all of those players, Mikey Johnson. Now we have sort of real attack, attacking players that that have the the opportunity to try and uh, make their mark in the game uh, at international level. And um, so that's and, and and right throughout. So I think I think we've got um, a lot of. A lot of uh, quite a talent, a group with a lot of potential now. A group with a lot of potential, and uh, that's that's how I would definitely feel. Thanks, Neil. Hi, Stephen. Uh, in September, when Evan was injured, you said that he, he just felt too sore to, to play. How much of it is down to how he feels himself? How much is down to the FBI medical staff? And how much pressure is an 18 year old under from his club when he's such an asset to them, both in terms of now and as an asset to the 
Yeah, no, September was a little bit different because obviously he had a knee pain. It's not that this time, and uh, I think um, he's been brilliant. Like he could have easily been ruled out because he wasn't available for his club the weekend. And Evan has been terrific. He's reported. He's determined to play this week, and he's been very, you know, we've been very showed a great attitude and showed a, br a brilliant attitude coming in. So it wasn't a case easily like. Have not been available for his club the weekend, he could have easily been ruled out, but that doesn't seem to be the case. He, he seems to be really positive in his outlook. He's just we'll see how we'll see how he goes between now and the, and the weekend. But he he's shown a great determination to come in this week and want to play. You're, you're optimistic about that, well, <laughs> I'm cautiously sure. optimistic. You know, cautiously optimistic to see. Uh, but is he? You know, is it does it, is it the case where the player kind of has to force the issue to say to the club? No, go. no, it hasn't been like that. Um, Brighton have been quite very. Uh, yeah, the medical team liaised with our medical team, and it hasn't been like that in the, on this occasion. Well, we're delighted to have him here, and uh, we'll see we'll see how things go. Aidan, please. Uh, Stephen, you spoke earlier about the, the win over Scotland in '97 as one of the all-time great or important Irish qualifying wins. In other games in the group, you said it's kind of the same. I think before France, home and away, Holland home, Greece away, that you felt. This team had the ability to come up one of those. What gives you confidence, or why do you think the team has a possibility to do it on Saturday? Well, we've, we've gone close. You know, we've gone very close on, on a couple of occasions. So, Holland, listen, Holland have uh, the formidable squad. They're at home. They they belong on the line. They know if they win, they qualify. That brings it down, its own motivation. It'll be it'll be a big challenge. It'll be an absolutely big challenge. We're under no illusions about that. Um, it'll be a huge challenge for the for the team, um, but you know a lot of good moments in in the game against Holland in September. Um, we were absolutely kicking ourselves having just could have gone two up to concede to get that goal after twenty minutes, after you know from the the, the penalty from, from the counter attack. So that. I was kicking ourselves with that with that goal, but as you say, they have players who can dominate a game as well. They have can control a the game. They have um, and and have a lot of pace in uh, in wide areas. You know, pace in wide areas for sure. They have a lot of pace in wide areas. So they are they're an exceptional team, and um, but we must go there with intent and belief and uh, and and absolutely. Uh, and with some com with conviction. Can I please? Uh, Stephen, um, you said the same about uh, Mark Hannon, director of football, has spoken about having all Irish teams in 15 of the senior playing the same, same characteristics. You've said the same thing actually over the last few years. Are, are your two visions aligned with how you, you, see, you see the future of Irish football and how you play? Um, are our two visions aligned? You know, yeah, the principles of how the team should play, I, w I would think, would certainly or it would be, you know, I've been very clear myself from from day one on that. Um, I've been you know, unequivocal, I haven't deviated from that. Um, and I'm taking a lot of criticism, criticism for that, but um, that's just how I see it, you know, that's how I genuinely see it. And um, so Mark, yeah, Mark has come in and uh, um, obviously he's got his own team and behind the scenes and with Shane Robertson coming in and, and uh, they'll work at all levels of the game to uh, to um, to improve things, you know, and I think uh, Mark is You know, it's very, very professional. You know, very, very professional, and very collaborative. You know, very collaborative, and um, so uh, yeah. Would, would you change if you were going to Amsterdam three years ago? <coughs> what you know now, three years later, would you change the way you'd set up the team or the approach? Just from three, like three and a half years of the absolute cold face of the international football, would you, would you change anything about how you team is such a such a massive game? So, just give me that question again, sorry. Knowing what you know from the last three and a half years as a yeah. manager, would you change the way you'd go about trying to get a result in Amsterdam? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not that. Uh, I don't. It's not that I don't have a capacity to learn from mistakes or learn from learn from games. Of course, of course we do. Um, what I would say is that the game, like obviously we've not played Holland and Amsterdam, but the games. Uh, risk of repeating myself. The games against the teams of that caliber earlier have been on the on the fine margins away. So we've not been far away there, and. Um, we just have to get better at what we, you know we have to get just get better at what we do you know we have to improve aspects of how we play and um, continue to improve i don't think there's nothing wrong with the way we're well not every, every game is different of course you can't categorize all the games you know what i mean but generally i think we're on the right track in a lot of games and play very well in a lot of those games um but um we have to obviously turn the turn those draws into victories and and defeats into draws. You know, certainly that's what you have to do. Paul, help please. Tim, just gone to the stadium on Saturday in Amsterdam, named after Cruyff. Just wondering, how interested would you be in figures like him, visionaries of the game? <laughs> yeah, of course. No, obviously when he played as before my time of course but uh, but I read his book for sure um, and um, you know obviously very very aware of, of him and his history and, and the history of uh, Dutch football of course um, uh, yeah for sure so obviously he's had a big influence on not only Dutch football but uh, Spanish football, particularly, and then because of, because of um, because of that world football really because Barcelona have become such a dominant team in world football and also um, by by a consequence Spain were dominant for 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 a while a long time so and then of course the the growth of Ajax. And, and, and Dutch football. So he, he was obviously one person, he was a very dominant um, figure, of course, but there were other managers, coaches that he influenced him before that as well. And, um, and that's what a full time. It comes back to the question earlier on about what do you gain from having a full time environment <laughs> in the European leagues? doing that on a regular basis with proper infrastructure. You get people who influence and learn from other coaches in that industry and industry rather than Irish coaches possibly having to go abroad to work. You get that in in an industry here and I'm, I'm not saying I'm, re, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not related to Johan Cruyff but you know because obviously he's a one-off and, and a, you know a visionary and you know he's a one-off and I'm not relating any, anyone to, to Johan Cruyff but I'm just saying that that's what you do get advantages from that from from having great those like having an, an arena like Ajax have and the infrastructure they have I'm not saying we can aspire to that here but you can you know those, those kind of environments can a really good coaching environment uh, with proper infrastructure can inspire other coaches who influence, influence other coaches and knock on effect on the stability around that and clubs and can, can really inspire um, create opportunities for players and coaches to really grow and multiply the amount of coaches down that that are at the top level. Uh, Stephen Sykes, thanks. Uh, you mentioned fine margins, Stephen, and I've been very close uh, in a lot of big games over the years. Um, if we were to win, or where would we win on Saturday night? Would you, would you use that as a, as a bargaining tool with the FAI going forward for a new deal? Number one, I haven't, I haven't bargained anything or I haven't, I haven't really had any you know, I haven't made a case, of, but more or less, I just kept my head down, worked hard, and tried to um, ultimately prepare the team this week um, for these games. And just focus on the on this game because it's a very tough game, uh, Holland. There's no point in me talking about the implications if we win, where I'm. You know, I think 
it's a very very tough game. They've got a lot of very a lot of a lot of high caliber international players playing at the highest level, and um, we'll get a real tough game on on Saturday night, and we have to try and just rise to that challenge and do our utmost to to uh, to put in a big performance and then take that into the game on, on Tuesday. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.